Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are discussing Imix, the primordial lord of fire. Hey Brian. Hey Will. How you doing today? I'm good, man. And welcome to the new year. Indeed. We Thank did you. it. It's we did do number it. two of this year. It is the yeah, it is the number two of this year. We already Indeed. did one. We nice. already did one. Yes. Welcome everyone to Indeed. Dungeon Cast 2024. Indeed. It's gonna get crazy. Not only is it the beginning of the year, but it's also the coldest part of the year, at least here in California. Which by cold I mean I'm still kind of wearing a t shirt and it's like fifty seven degrees outside. Yes. <laughs> That's true. I have a sweater on. You do have a sweater on. And it's true. Shorts <laughs> and shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured it's time uh, time to heat things up by going Ooh. to the hottest place in the entire universe, uh, the elemental plane of fire. Dang! I almost said your mom's house. That would not have been cool. <laughs> I would have laughed. <laughs> uh, so we've covered a lot of powerful entities on this show. Gods, demon lords, arch devils, elder evils, uh, the Oinoloth. Remember the Oinoloth? Kind of, yeah. The general of Gehenna. That's right. Uh, we've even uh, touched on the Slod lords back in the Slod episode. We did. Uh, but we have not tackled one of the most ancient and powerful types of beings in the cosmos in very much detail. The primordials, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. godlike beings made of manifest entropy and elemental energy. Today's topic falls within this category, and more specifically within the subcategory of beings called the archimentals. Archimentals. The archimentals. Okay. But what is an archimental? I don't know. Archimentals, uh, also known as elemental princes or collectively princes of elemental good and evil, are powerful beings of the elemental planes and rulers over the element ele elementals and the planes in which they exist on sure okay uh although archimentals are not the true uh soul rulers of their planes they like to consider themselves as such and often grant themselves regal titles like prince or princess oh well who who's above them so like no regular one, god mm, okay so the planes of fire and water and whatnot aren't quite like the the outer planes where it's like there's one definitive ruler of each of these planes. Mm -hmm. It's a it's just a bit more chaotic than that. So Imix, the person we're talking about today, is in control of a great, great amount of the plane of fire. But he has direct rivals and he has yet technically people more powerful than him. They're not necessarily above him. They are in contention with him. But like he, he, he straight up can't overpower them. Okay. And a lot of times they are gods. Um... And a lot of times they're just other primordials. So like Imix on the primordial like level is at the kind of the lowest level. These archimentals, interesting. They're, okay. they're, I, I would put say they're more along the the power level of like demon lords. Okay, so pretty strong, very strong. Yeah. yeah. While there are other primordials out there like Vizuvu who are more like gods. They're straight up just god level. Power. Okay, so these so. are defeatable by by PCs. Yes. Yes. By very high level, very smart PCs with, Indeed. A, pl with a plan. Indeed. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. So uh, to be clear, these entities do have the power to rule over their respective planes, but are usually inhibited by two things, uh, their own chaotic nature. And that, that really does play a part. Mm -hmm. And the direct opposition of the opposing Archimental. So that's the thing. Every Archimental has a direct opposition. Imix is the uh, the prince of elemental, uh, uh, the, e the prince of evil elemental fire but there is a prince of good elemental fire who we will talk about today okay um and i would put the power level of archimentals at roughly demon lord level level while most primordials of the dawn war are more so the power level of gods okay imix the prince of elemental evil the all-consuming fire the eternal flame imix is the evil archimental of fire and is a primordial or older than the world itself damn most often depicted as a pillar of red flame crackling and hissing with life, with flaming tendrils stretched out to grasp and feel. This roughly humanoid column stands between 18 to 30 feet. That's 5.5 .5 to 9 meters. Tall and radiates waves of intense heat. That's cool. Within the pillar of fire are smoldering black pits for eyes. Where he walks, Imix leaves roaring infernos of hellish fire, which quickly dissipate into noxious black smoke. Imix rarely speaks, but he crackles and roars with terrible laughter as anything combustible within his grasp bursts into flame and feed his hate. Oh, wow. 
like his native element, Emix is fickle, temperamental, and highly destructive. Anything combustible stokes his hunger, but he takes special delight in feeding on the handiwork and possessions of intelligent beings, such as crops, buildings, or goods. <laughs> Emix doesn't even spare his own followers or those who placate him with gifts and sacrifices. He is capricious and unpredictable, and often turns on those who think they have earned his favor. Yeah, like he's going to burn down an art house and like consume it and be like, mm, hard work and acrylic. <laughs> Exactly. Delicious. It tastes better because it makes someone else very sad. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't taste I don't taste the sadness necessarily, but I know it's gonna happen. Exactly. When they find out about this, mm, mm. <laughs> exactly. So Emix is a passionate being, quick to anger, vain, extremely paranoid, and prone to jealousy. Mortal beings are mere objects of contempt to Emix, and he burns alive any he can catch for nothing more than the wicked glee of watching them writhe and die in his flames. Oh, man. Yeah, he's a jerk. He's an absolute piece of shit. He's, he's very scary. <laughs> Emix, stupid fire. <laughs> stupid fire. Uh, Emix possesses boundless energy and passion and often puts his creativity to good use, the misfortune of others. Uh, Emix spends a majority of his time on schemes and machinations of ill intent, usually planar domination, mass genocide, and uh, torturing and killing his arch rivals are, oh, wow. are mainly what he focuses on. So he's a, he's a cartoon villain. Yeah. That, Emix is a cartoon villain. Very evil. I like cartoon villains. <laughs> <laughs> I like Emix. Okay. <laughs> Despite his brash and arrogant nature... Emix is noted to be a masterful tactician and is incredibly creative when it comes to outsmarting his foes. But his overconfidence and howdiness often cause him to rush into situations, and he easily becomes frustrated when things don't go according to his plans. He rarely parlays or negotiates, preferring instead to destroy any who refuse to acquiesce to him. Okay. He's reminding me, he's giving me some late game Palpatine vibes. Not super late, not okay, zombie Palpatine. All right. Yeah. Spoilers for Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Palpatine, yeah. No, nah, late game Palpatine's like kind of on edge. He's like, I'm going to blow up all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Upon the vast plain of burnt dreams rising from the liquid <laughs> flames of the blazing sea, a monstrous active volcano belches fire and ash into the smoldering sky. The plain of burnt dreams is where all our old projects are. I know, I mean, right? Got Seriously. off the ground. God, why? <laughs> Within the heart of this volcano stands the Temple of Ultimate Consumption, the <laughs> mighty obsidian pyramid fortress of Emix, Prince of Evil Fire Creatures. Sweet. <laughs> Basalt and other volcanic rocks ring, uh, ring the stronghold, which sits in a lake of dancing fire, constantly patrolled by dozens of el evil elder fire elementals. From his fortress, Emix commands legions of elementals, Ifrit, salamanders, flame horrors, uh, fire mephits, magmams, and those who do not bow down to him are destroyed. I bet he hangs out in his temple of ultimate consumption, and there's like a stack of pallets, like wood pallets, mm -hmm. that like ignite really easily, or like Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. And he eats them like chips. Yeah, definitely. Definitely <laughs> like chips. Um, I think for obvious reasons, I get major Fire King vibes from Adventure Time. Oh, I don't, you know. I kind of know about Fire King and He's, Fire Princess. Oh, oh, okay. Did you not watch the whole series? I didn't watch the whole thing. I just oh, like have seen okay. lots of chunks. Yeah, of Flame it. Princess and uh, Flame King, not Fire King. It's Flame King. Flame King. As the prince of evil fire elementals, it makes us two major goals. One is planar domination, followed by cosmological conquest. Big surprise. Sure. The other <laughs> is a strange and overwhelming obsession with defeating Olhydra, another Ar Archimental, and the princess of evil water. Okay, so they're warring with other elementals like in this kind of domain of the cosmic fuckery imix is right i can't speak for the others but imix is because but probably because why don't they show up in the blood war or whatever the fuck they say they're busy down there we're busy over here yeah we're busy over here okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah very much very right. much so imix is almost exclusively consumed with killing Ohydra. <laughs> the reasons for this are largely unknown but since the Archimentals don't generally participate in pointless elemental rivalries, Cryonax, an ice uh, evil, an, an ice Archimental of evil ice creatures, is not concerned at all with taking out Zaman Rule, the Archimental of good fire elementals. Uh, the reason must be something more than simple fire versus water dichotomy. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. It's like, dude, I can't burn it. I have to kill it. Yeah, somehow. no, it, it it isn't that. I okay. mean, that I'm sure that might be part of it, or it, it makes his hatred worse. But the lore specifically says that that ain't it. Okay. Um, she seems to share this hatred, though, and discovering what boils between them uh, would, ah. <laughs> yeah, would certainly be highly valuable information and information that would be dangerous to learn. That's what I was going to say. Is like, dude, you need to trap this water, this old hydra in a, in a glass, uh -huh. what a, a pot, 
Okay. Something they can't get out of. Sure, yeah. And you got to just burn the bottom of it until they evaporate. But yeah, boil, boiler. Ah, oh, um, damn, I made a steam god. No. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Rumors abound that the two are related in some way with the possibility of them being siblings uh, being the most commonly repeated rumor. Uh, when not consumed with his hatred and endless warfare against the princess of evil water creatures, it makes busy, busies himself with his dark agenda to push the entire elemental plane of fire toward evil and thus under his sway. Victory in a recent war against Zanin, Zaman Rule, the prince of good fire creatures, has proven to Imix that he can succeed. The last two major powers standing in his way are the Ifrit and their grand sultan of the city of Brass and the deity Kossith. Okay. So Kossith is the god of elemental fire and purification through fire. Um is a bit of, of a confusing being falling under both the categories of God and Primordial. Um, either way, he is a magnitude more powerful than Imix, and though he is wary of Imix, he does not fear him. He's way too powerful. Okay. But he's also like, from my understanding, like Imix is like active on the political sphere of the fire plane. Well, Kasuth is just doing his thing and not caring. So Omega. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amex searches the plane for all creatures of great power to help him in his battles. His greatest servant is Asgaroth, not to be confused with Asgarath, the dragon deity. Uh, okay, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, do your best because I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Um, so Asgaroth <laughs> is a pit fiend. Uh, who hungered for more power than he could attain in the Nine Hells. Extremely loyal, Asgaroth serves as Imix's general and has been tasked with destroying Zaman rule. Asgaroth also put Imix in contact with the archdevil Moloch, who we haven't really talked too much about on, well, we've, here and there. So Moloch, oh God, my memory. Uh, Moloch used to be one of the archdevils. Okay. Like one of the archdukes, excuse me. He is an archdevil. Uh, in charge of, I want to say... It was either Levistus's plane or it was uh, currently Glazia's plane. But he was deposed, I think, due to Levistus's bullshit. And then the hag countess took his place. And it all political bullshit. Anyways, he's been out of power for a while and he wants it back. It must That's Moloch's be thing. sad to lose to a guy frozen inside of a glacier. Well, he wasn't then. That oh, came okay. later. Basically, if I'm oh, not if, so bad then. If memory serves, the Levistus. Hag Countess, Beelzebub, Moloch situation mm -hmm. all played to Asmodeus's like plans. And then once it all resolved itself, he came up with a bullshit reason, a fake reason to freeze Levistus. Right. Um, granted, maybe the reason was real. They say Levistus tried to kill Asmodeus's consort, but it's debatable that he might have been framed. So anyways, <laughs> back to the plane of fire. Sounds God damn, these fiends always encroaching on everyone as else's gear. As soon as a fiend shows up. Well, I was going to say... <laughs> Like, uh, it would be funny to have, like, all these bad guy villains show up and be, like, friends, like, led by Asmodeus. But then this guy's got, like, a, a devil with him. Yeah, yeah. That's probably not cool with other people. No, definitely not. Yeah. I mean, it'd be very upsetting to a lot of people. So Asgroth, the pit fiend, put Imix in contact with the archdevil Moloch, who seeks Imix's help in regaining his power in the hierarchy of Beator. Um such as gotcha. such as Imix's ambition that he has managed to network and raise up one of the largest standing armies in the cosmos, a massive multitude of free fire elementals, fire giants, fire mephits, fire newts, magnet magmins, salamanders, and red dragons, some of whom uh, worship him as a god. <laughs> fire team, everybody hands in. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Just kidding. We Hell like yeah. that. Yeah, we're into that. Um, that's cool. Fire Brigade. Fire Brigade, yeah. So most of Imix's history on the material plane is concentrated on the world of O-Earth. Again, we know it's supposed to be pronounced Earth, but we say the O so, so they know. know. Mm -hmm. um, the princes of elemental evil, Cryonax, Imix, Ogremok, or is it Ogre, Ogremosh? It's one of those two. Uh, I want to say Ogremosh. Ogremosh sounds cooler. Yeah. Old head bang harder. Yeah, hell yeah. Old Hydra and Yancy Bin believe the Elder Elemental Eye to be their forebearer, a powerful entity who will elevate them to true godhood and give them domination over the prime material plane if only they can free it from its imprisonment. They do not realize that the Elder Elemental Eye is actually Thoris Dune tricking oh, them. Oh, no. Yeah. There's Dune. There's what the Dune's fuck? Is, what is everyone showing up here in the <laughs> Elemental Plane of Fire? It's I don't so, know, man. It's very chaotic. Mm hmm. Okay. Very chaotic here. So when Theris Dune first envisioned the Temple of Elemental Evil, he planned to involve Imix and his other children from the start. Children in quotes because they're not really his kids. They have mm -hmm. nothing to do with him. 
Okay. When Tharzdun's cult prepared the way for his arrival, its members contacted the elemental princes, and Imix was the first to respond. He was like, wait, we're up to no good? Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> I'm waiting for the call up. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he's wait by the phone. <laughs> uh, rather than risk his own destruction in this dangerous scheme, though, Imix sent a lesser, uh, a lesser aspect of himself to work his will. When this weaker incarnation was destroyed uh, by adventurers, uh, Imix divorced himself from the plot, and the other Archimentals quickly followed suit. Oh. So, in Faerun, so we're back in Forgotten Realms, Imix is venerated by the Cult of the Eternal Flame and has the second most populous cult of all Archimentals outside of his arch rival, Olhydra, which I'm sure drives him crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, spoilers for the 2015 adventure Princes of the Apocalypse incoming. You have been warned. Uh, this is going to happen on almost every single of the uh, uh, Archimental episodes, by the way. Okay. We're going to have a little section that's spoilers for that particular adventure. Yeah, here's an adventure that sucks. We're going to spoil it. Yeah, I hear it's not good, <clears throat> but it's got a lot of cool pieces. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about today. So the followers of the Eternal Flame Cult are fascinated by the destructive power of fire and all of its manifestations. They aspire to use the power of fire to eradicate the corruption, the corruption of both civilization and nature using volcanic eruptions, forest fires, heat waves, and droughts. Okay. In order to herald a new world of ash and cinders ruled by fire alone. All the hot stuff. We're going to throw out all the hot stuff. They're Team Magma. There. They're Team Magma. Yeah. They are Team Magma. They want a Groudon really bad. <laughs> yes. Well, Imix is their Groudon. Imix is Groudon. <laughs> In the fire cultist doctrine, the world and all of its peoples are wicked and malformed, and the only hope is to purify everything, reducing all the smoking cinders. Mm. How do you know you're in a cult? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the eternal flame recruit from among those drawn to destruction for its own sake. This philosophy is very popular among creatures of elemental fire, and even non-intelligent fire monsters may inexplicably and naturally serve the fire cultists. Um, there's just kind of a spiritual affinity. Okay. Um, the fire cultist cultivate the fire cultist cultivates and encourages a culture of impetuousness, hot headedness, and violence. However, they do not act like mindless savages. They use a touch of fiendish inventiveness in their impetuousness. In their forges, uh, managed by captured slaves, they create new instruments to advance their insane philosophy. Fire cultists considered it a necessary step in their plan to unleash chaos over the world to conquer and to enslave. Yeah, arson is for world domination. Exactly. Yes. They have t shirts, but they keep getting burn holes in them. So, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the modern fire cult began when Vanifer, the prophet of fire, recovered one of the four elemental weapons crafted centuries before. We talked about all four of these weapons in the no in uh, the legendary magic items that aren't yeah, swords episode. Was this one the dagger? This it's the dagger. Yeah. Tinder strike the dagger. Yes. Nice. Good job, Brain. Indeed. Um, I mean, Brian. I mean, Brain. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, never mind. It's fucking up again. <laughs> so all of their work culminated in the year 1491 DR at the Fane of the Eye, a large cavern complex deep under the Dasaran Valley centered around a black ziggurat temple dedicated to the, to the Elder Elemental Eye. Working simultaneously with the other three elemental cults, the fire cultists tried to summon Imix to Turil using members of a missing diplomatic delegation from Mirabar and other captives as a sacrifice. Okay. And needless to say, they failed. That was fucking convoluted. Due to some pesky adventures that thwarted them yet again. Okay, cool. Good job, adventurers. Keep doing what you do. Yeah, keep thwarting Imix. It's great. Yeah, the the weird middle ground balancers of the D&D verse. Yeah, somehow. Adventurers. They're the linchpin in the cosmos. Yeah. <laughs> that, the gods know what's up and could stop stuff, but they're like, I could just send the adventurers, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they'll, like, barely we'll, stop it. We'll just send the interns. And it won't look like I did it. <laughs> yeah, we'll send the interns. Um, that is true. You could be like, the, the level 20s are approaching godhood, so. Uh, yeah, they're getting there for sure. For sure, they're getting there. Um, they have worshippers. So that's that's the basics of Imix. Uh, there's not he he has. There's two adventures he's involved in. The original uh, Elemental Eye adventure from like the 80s or whatever it was, and then the 2015 adventure. And is he a final boss in that, or like do you fight Imix or? Uh, yeah, you can fight Imix. We're gonna we'll go over his stat block and his legendary actions and his layer stuff. All you can fight all four of the. Um, of the Archimentals in Princes of the Apocalypse. Yeah, that's um, how we know he's fallible. He has a stat block. Exactly. That's how it's very killable. I think the idea here is that it's an avatar, though. So, you know, oh, there's, always, there's always, always that. Always yeah. the fucking avatars. Because you can't yeah. really... 
Well, and I think it's fair because I think the stat block that we're going to look at is only challenge rating 19. And I would say that Imix in in the flesh, if you will, uh, should probably be sit more like 24, 25. What if a wizard could just, you know how they like flip mountains and shit? They do whatever, yeah, yeah. Do whatever they want, really? Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Let's just teleport an ocean right over this dude. I know, right? That would do it. That might do it. That might do it. It would definitely bloody him. I'm in my fire bath, like, you know, in the, he's in a container, mm-hmm. uh, taking a big, a nice hot coals down on the bottom there, you know, chilling. Yeah. Ocean. Right on him. He's like, oh, I'll just burn this water away. Why is there so much? Um, to be fair, I think Amix is so strong that he like super <laughs> super heat up and just boil it, flash boil it. That's what I mean. But like, you need to flash boil so much. Maybe it could be ice water. Maybe it could be like a polar right. ice cap. There we go. There Drop we go. Drop a polar ice cap on him. You think he could stop that? I mean, it would definitely hurt him. <laughs> Can you imagine the adventurers going in there like I'm just gonna hit him with the cone of cold, and then when I run out, you hit him with your cone of cold. <laughs> I think he does have a vulnerability to either cold or water. We'll we'll see in the stat block. You do a tidal wave, I'll do a cone of cold. It'll be a cone of tidal waves. Indeed. Cold tidal waves. He'll die. He'll die. <laughs> Let's take sure Okay. He'll die. It's the grand adventures of Ilian and Bian. Keep painting, Bian. It's the only thing keeping the shard of substantial supporters of uh, the beacon going. Uh, okay. I we're getting I'm getting pretty tired, and I'm starting to run out of reds and yellows. But it's working, Ben. We've crossed out of the elemental chaos and into the plane of fire. We're closer to the material plane, which is a good thing. And also, well, obviously closer to the to the gift of dry who has our shard. This is the most like uninspired thing I've ever done, I think. I I'm, I feel like I'm being forced into this. And, uh, <laughs> for some reason, like I'm getting way more tired painting this, and my hand won't stop sweating. It, it, well, it's it's incredibly hot here. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's true. There's fire there's everywhere. Blazing infernos everywhere. I don't even know. Maybe I should have painted water, but instead I painted fire. And uh, like I don't know. I just kind of let my hand guide me this time. And it's like some big frowdy fire face. I don't uh, let know. Me see, let me see. I'm just doing my best. Here, take a look. <clears throat> oh, wow. Um, Actually, it looks excellent, Ben. I mean, you've oh, thank ob- you. you've obviously painted the infamous Archimental image, the Prince of Elemental Evil Fire. Good for you. How do you how do you even know about Amix? What are you I was just looking at that thing way out in the distance over there. What do you, what do you mean? I don't know. I was just painting what I saw something that looked like this way out in the distance over there. And, yeah, I don't know. Let me see here. Oh my god. Ben, keep painting! Keep painting! He's coming this way! Oh, you want me to We are not fighting this thing! We got to go! Do I I have to keep painting? Keep painting! Okay! Don't don't look behind me. I have my plate, my ass plates open for ventilation purposes. It's quite sweaty. We've returned. Indeed we have. We are fucking back. We are. We're on fire. Ah, <laughs> it hurts. It's so good. It's <laughs> cold. Now it's hot. Um, this picture of Emix in D&D Beyond is, looks like a little kid drew like an uh, angry face on it. <laughs> it it's does. It's pretty fun. Uh, you know, his it, the look looks like he didn't realize that the mortal that's burning in him was there. He's just like, huh? <laughs> Turning around. Oh. You taste good. <laughs> you worked hard on yourself. Delicious. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, uh, Brian, uh, why don't you let me know about all these juicy stats? I sure will. Right after I tell people if you want to support oh, Alien yeah. and Beeren, you can do so on patreon.com slash dungeoncast, uh, where Alien and Beeren are spiritually. Yeah, indeed. What do they? Th- what do you think? What do you think they did? Oh, well, hopefully they didn't get burned alive and it makes this flames. Probably hot, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure okay. it was. Um, Imix is a huge elemental, also a huge jerk. <laughs> He's neutral evil. Uh, he just wants everything to be hot. Yeah. But I think neutral evil, uh, I think it fits him because he himself is chaotic, but he values like order when it comes to his own forces. Sure. So, he, you know, he he's a little bit of both. All right. His armor class is 17. How nice. come that's not natural? Great question. I mean, well, Maddie. it's also not armor. He doesn't have equipment. That's even more natural. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's, yeah. Yeah. It can't be. He'd burn it. <laughs> 
I maybe am maybe fire. Maybe it's not natural because it's magical because it's fire. Oh, okay. I'm magical fire. But so he is magical fire. Yeah, that so makes sense. Natty. HP is 325 or 26 D12 plus 156. Uh, his speed is 50 feet. Oh, I'm supposed to convert. <laughs> Hold on. I or, promise. I did, and I'm trying to follow up on it. So 50 feet to, to meters? We'll do meters. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's 15.2 meters. You didn't do the voice. <laughs> that's 15.2 <laughs> meters. I can't do it. He'll, you get another chance. He's got okay. a fly speed also of 50 feet. That's 15.2 meters. Yes. Strength is 19 or plus. I, I do the pluses now. Strength is plus four. Dex plus seven. That's a tricky little acrobatic fire. Yeah. Con yeah. plus six. Intelligence plus two. Uh, wisdom plus three. And charisma plus six. Very strong. Very strong. Very dexterous. Very wise. And very charismatic. Yeah. I guess I should say powerful because strength is a stat here. Of He's also a smart cookie. It's one of the weaker stats. Uh, he is smart, but not as smart as he is flexible. No. <laughs> No, he's not. Uh, saving throws. Uh, dexterity Lots plus 13. Them. That's a good one. Con plus 12. That's a great one. Though. Charisma plus 12. No Those are the best ones. No, not charisma. Charisma is not a good one. No? No, wisdom. Was. Wisdom's a good one. Oh, yeah, you're Those right. are the three right. good ones. But charisma's nice. But Intelligence yeah. is bad. But having both dex and con so high, that's very, very convenient. I guess you, you got to focus on wisdom saves with him. Mm. That's your way out. That's your way. Take control of his mind. Uh, and get him wet. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> Damage resistances, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Damage immunities, fire, and hmm? oh, poison. poison. Always poison, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't poison him. He's made of fire. He just burns it up. <laughs> he burns up any fire you shoot at him, or he just maybe become... Uh, wouldn't, uh, it would be funny if fire healed him. It would, be, it would kind of make sense if it did. Sort of. Like your magical fire getting poured in him. Because he could just like hang out and stuff he burns and heal. Yeah. Is immune to you being charmed, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned? Well, there, there goes restraint. a lot of your mind control stuff. Yeah, you can't do any of it to him. <laughs> so, like, he'll take the psychic damage, but that's it. Uh, senses, blind sight for 120 feet. It's interesting. So the eyes in him are, are purely ceremonial. Mm -hmm. he, he can probably just see from every bit of his fiery self. I'm not moving on until you convert 120 Oh, feet. I'm sorry. I forgot. What am I converting? 120 feet. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 120 <laughs> 36.5 meters. Good job. Uh, and then passive perception is 13. He speaks common and ignan, mm -hmm. which is the fire. He should probably speak primordial. Too. Primordial, yeah. yeah. You would think, right? Like yeah. you could do all the, you could talk to the other ones. Yeah, you would think Because so. you're a god. Yeah, exactly. Why do you only have two languages in this game? Bro. You're a god. I guess he's, he, he's I speak not. fire. A, he's not as smart as he is flexible. We've we've solidified that. <laughs> I'm not a smart fire. <laughs> I mean, challenge rating is nice. Smart fire. <laughs> challenge rate. He's still pretty smart. Yeah. Challenge rating is nineteen. That's twenty two thousand experience points, and proficiency bonus is plus six. Do, are, have you been keeping track of experience points in your personal game? No, no, I like milestone. Okay, it's just another number I gotta like write down. No, I'm I, not trying to do that in my I'm personal game. I'm with you on that. Maybe in like a more formal game, I would. Yeah. For fun, and then we'd be tracking like everything, like money. If we're gonna do that, we're gonna track everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Empowered attacks. Imix's slam attacks are treated as magical for the purpose of bypassing resistance and immunity to non-magical weapons. See? His body is magical, thus it's not natural. I got a magic fire body. <laughs> it's uh, impressive. That's impressive. Yeah, it is. I wish I could say that. I wish I had a ma magic fire body. <laughs> fire aura. At the start of each of Imix's turns, each creature within 10 feet of him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need to be on your toes. I'm sorry, man. 10 feet converts to and I'll eventually just have all these memorized. Uh, three meters mm -hmm. of him takes. I knew the answer, but, it, you know, uh, within 10 feet of him or three meters takes uh, takes 17 or 5d6 fire damage and flammable objects in the in the aura that aren't being worn or carried ignite. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's rules for that, I believe. Uh, like when your stuff's on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, a creature also takes 17 or 5d6 fire damage if it touches Imix or hits him with a melee attack while within 10 feet three meters of him and a creature takes damage uh, the first time on a turn that Imix moves into its space. Non-magical weapons that hit Imix are destroyed by fire immediately after dealing damage to him. That's cool that they at least hit, hurt him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I like this, uh, this ability because it's just... It, can get out of hand really fast if the players don't address it. It's like, okay, you get hurt when he's near you. You get hurt if you attack him or touch him. You get hurt when he moves through you, and you bet your ass he, he is moving through you. Um, so, like, he's just, he's just fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> Do something about it. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a monster you fight without a plan. Yeah. 
uh, illumination. Emic sheds a bright light in a 60 foot. I don't have my mouse. Hold on. 18.2 meters radius and dim light for an additional 60 feet. 18.2 meters. <laughs> Legendary resistance three times a day. If Imix fails a saving throw, he can choose to succeed instead. Neato. Neat. Uh, innate spellcasting. Imix's innate spellcasting ability is charisma. Spell save DC 20 plus 12 to hit with spell attacks. He can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components. At will, he can do fireball. It's like the best one. At wall will. Of, yeah, that's Wall great. of fire. That's also really good. I like wall of fire. Wall of fire is good, although it is confusing. Like when the damage activates on that one i'm um, pretty sure it's at the start of the turn right yeah but it also says like when you move in and out of it like we did it on super quest saga and i don't i remember it being like a what the fuck how is it doing this much damage kind of thing and maybe we're doing i it mean wrong. it's a high level spell so it should do a lot of damage so it's i'm sorry i'm pulling up i'm pulling up spell, right? fire. uh it's level four or yeah it's a fourth level evocation um 60 feet blah 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 when the wall appears, each creature within it must make a dex save and take 5d8 fire damage. One side of the wall selected by you when you cast the spell deals 5d8 fire damage to each creature that ends its turn within 10 feet of that side. Oh, the or side inside. of the wall. Okay. Yeah. So if it, you know, when it moves through you, you take the damage. Mm -hmm. And if you end your turn within 10 feet of it, you take the damage again. It's a good ass spell. It's a honestly. good spell. I like wall of fire. Yeah. Magic resistance. Uh, or did I say three times a day? Uh, no, I didn't. Three times yeah. a day. Uh, Imix can cast Firestorm, Firestorm, Haste, and Teleport. Firestorm, I think it's pretty high level, so I'm imagining it's very good. Haste is great. He just hastes himself or his peep. And then Teleport. That's you know, his awesome. pit fiend friend, which yeah. you know he's got a pit fiend you with You know him. he's going to haste that pit fiend. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. No. <laughs> pit fiend's going to come out like on fire from the belly of Imix and be hasted. Yeah, and... you didn't even know he's there. Yeah. He was inside. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love that. I prefer a little less hot, but it's still pretty good. Raw. Okay, magic resistance. It makes us advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. That's pretty fucking good. Um, actions, multi-attack. It makes, makes two slam attacks or two flame blast attacks. Uh, slam, melee weapon attack plus 12 to hit with a reach of 10 feet. Uh, oh, God. Uh, working on it. I got you. <laughs> over here it's three three meters three <laughs> meters sorry i was looking at pit fiends because i was like wait a minute doesn't a pit fiend like out yeah pit fiend is challenge rating 20 so like this is definitely an avatar yeah and not like in the flesh sure yeah so anyway it has no flesh. a challenge rating 20 creature bursts from its belly yeah bursts from this challenge rating 19 fired <laughs> not a demon uh yeah slam attack 10 feet, 3 meters. 3 meters. One target's going to hit for 18 or 2d10 plus 7 bludge damage plus 18, 5d6 fire damage. That's a lot. Uh, flame blast, ranged attack, uh, range spell attack, plus 12 to hit with a range of 250 feet. God damn it. <laughs> I was thinking about, like, the fact that he's got single target and AoE at will fire stuff. 250 feet, you say? Yeah. That'd be 76.2 meters. Very good. Um that's going to hit one target uh, for 35 or 10d6 fire damage. Pretty good. Uh, so he's just, he doesn't really need to cast fireball. He's just doing fireball all the time. Well, I think it's, it's hold on, I got the wrong stat block. Is that AoE though? No, the, so Flame well, Blast not, is, yeah, flame one, blast target. is one target. So it's like, yeah. more. Da do you want to do more damage on one person or do you want to do AoE? Splash, and the fact yeah. that he could just do either every turn. Yeah, the flat 35 is pretty good. We haven't even got to legendary actions. And we're going to summon elementals once a day. Imix summons up to three fire elementals and loses 30 HP for each elemental he summons. That's not worth it. He I'm sorry. Off a piece That's of super not worth it be to do. Like, fire elementals are challenge rating five creatures. And having three is nice, but like... I don't like him losing HP for that because, quite frankly, like, he's the lord of fucking fire. Like, he should be able to just summon those. He should snap and those motherfuckers show up. Uh, he's got a lot of HP, and he see. is breaking off a piece of his own Kit Kat bar to do it. I know, but... 30's not that crazy here. Okay, but he, so that's 90 for all three. If you, so, if so that brings him down no, to three. He, he can do one. He could, but it's and it's a whole action, so he loses his action to do it. Well, you can only summon it once a day. We're going to say he does it before the party rolls. Oh, wait, three fire. So, yeah, he could break he could break 90 off to do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, action economy is going to be a thing. And like yeah. Splitting up, like, I don't know, maybe there's a task they can go do. Like, 
hey, you can come fight me or you can go save those villagers over there that my fire elementals are going yeah, to Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be a way to utilize it effectively. But for me, like, the fact that he's literally the prince of evil fire elementals, I just feel like he should have a couple. Well, it's an avatar of the... Yeah, I guess, okay. He's also, when he shits, a pit fiend comes out. <laughs> gotta watch out for that. Yeah, they don't Maybe say that. The avatar that that's not fiend. listed in the stat block. Is it, can the pit fiend have an avatar? I mean, I, I think some pit fiends would be powerful enough to, to avatar it up. I, I find it hard to believe that this dude commands an army of all the fire creatures in the game and is rolling up on you alone. Yeah, that's true. This is an avatar. It, we've we've said it multiple times, but that's that's what it is. Let's uh, continue. Summon elementals have max HP, appear within 100 oh, feet of Imix, and disappear. It's 30 if, meters. Imix, <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> it's a rough map on that one. They disappear if Imix is reduced to zero HP. But, I mean, like, if you're going to... These fire elementals have to have more than 30 HP, right? They definitely do. I think they have, like, 90. Let me pull up fire elemental. I think quick. it's worth it. You think so? I think so. The, the HP argument is strong. It's a strong argument you Well, also, up. you just, like, multiplied how many they attacks have a, you have. They have 102 uh, HP. Do they have a multi-attack? Do they have a multi-attack? They do have a multi-attack. I touch. think it's worth it. So it's plus six to hit, though, so it's pretty low to hit. Yeah. And that's the problem is... you got to deal with it. That's what I think, I think yeah. is going on here. I'm trying to... See. They don't have an aura, it doesn't look like. Let me see here. Creature that touches the elemental... Or makes a melee attack, takes a d10 of fire damage in addition. To, oh, yeah, they can move through you and just constantly make you take fire damage. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, you do have to deal with them. Yeah, it's situational, but I, th I think you do this normally. Yeah. And it might not be worth the action mid-combat, but if it did it, like, at the beginning. The only thing that makes it worth it is because of Imix's fire aura. So it's like, okay, you didn't. You don't get an actual action mm -hmm. besides summoning your boys, mm -hmm. but you do. You can do the thing where you just like move through two people and like yeah, deal a lot of damage. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, also, this thing can teleport away. It could summon three elementals and just like teleport out of there. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Tell you to fuck yourself. True. <clears throat> yeah, summon three elementals, do a firestorm, teleport out, and that's its turn. And the, it's well, you, they, you can't do that because that, that takes us up too much actions. No, it would be multiple turns. This took place, oh, but yeah. like you. Yeah. It's going to legendary resist those three turns. You're not going to hit it basically in three, yeah. like without you hit it with normal stuff, but not anything that causes a save. It's got yeah. advantage on all that shit anyway, even if you find a way to make it yeah. through the legendary actions. So, speaking of, it can take three of those motherfuckers, choosing from <laughs> options below. Only one legendary action option can be used at a time and only at the end of another creature's turn. It makes regains spent legendary actions at the start of its turn. That's how that works. Heat wave. Emix casts a or creates a blast of heat within within three hundred within three hundred feet. <laughs> this is ninety meters. <laughs> each roughly. creature each creature in an area in physical contact with metal objects, for example, carrying metal weapons or wearing metal armor, takes nine or two d eight fire damage. Each creature in the area that isn't resistant or immune to fire damage must must make a DC twenty one Constitution saving throw or gain one level of exhaustion. That's a cool feature. Indeed. Teleport costs two actions. It makes magically teleports up to up to 100 and well, up to 120 up to 120 feet. Th 36 meters? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> 36 meters. Do the voice. 36 meters. <laughs> Do not occupy space he can see. Anything he makes is wearing or carrying isn't teleported with him. Combustion costs three, all three of the actions. It makes causes one creature he can see within 30 feet of him to burst into flames. The target must make a DC 21 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 70 or 20 D6 fire damage and catches fire. It's humiliating to catch fire. Uh, a target on fire takes 10 or 3D6 damage. <laughs> 10 or 3d6 fire damage when it starts its turn and remains on fire until it or another creature takes an action to douse the flames. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and doesn't catch fire, which is much better. Uh, Indeed. Now, let's talk about the lair, yeah? Uh, yeah, let's move on to the lair. Let's go. I mean, uh, I already told you what it looks like, so I guess we could just go over the lair actions. Yeah, it's like a fucking volcano. It's, it's a ziggurat inside of a volcano. Uh, so... Master of Heat and Flames. This dude is going to kill you in here. Um, let's see. 
Uh, this ha- his lair actions happen on initiative count twenty. Uh, so any fires in the lair flare up drastically, quadrupling in size. For example, a fire blazing in a five foot, it's like the one point five meters by five foot. <laughs> okay, one point five meters <laughs> area expands to a ten foot three meters by ten foot three meters area. Pools or streams of lava or other molten material are also affected. Creatures caught in the area of an expanded fire are subject to the normal damage for entering or being in the fire. Uh, Creatures caught by a sudden flood of lava must succeed on a DC 20 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. In addition, the normal damage for contact with molten rock. Okay, let's look that up. Yeah, can you look up fire damage too? Fire damage and molten rock damage. Molten rock damage... I'll go. I'll continue. I'll yeah. continue on. Don't expect meters from me. Um, a thick cloud. Okay, a thick cloud of black smoke and uh, burning embers fills a forty-foot radius sphere. That's uh, what's three times. That's twelve. Twelve meter. Twelve meters. What, is what was that? Forty, 40 feet. Forty feet is 12? going to be twelve meters. Yeah. Twelve meters. Uh, within the one hundred and twenty feet of a mix. I know you said. How many meters that is? <clears throat> All right, really? so the DMG, sorry, the DMG <laughs> gives these rules under improvising damage. Uh, uh, through a lava stream, for example, is 10d10 damage. Okay. Um, so there you go, 10d10 damage for the lava. Fire damage, of course. A thick cloud of black smoke and burning uh, embers fills a 40-foot radius sphere with a 120 feet of a mix, lasting until initiative count 20 of the next round. Creatures and objects within or beyond the smoke are heavily obscured. A creature that enters the cloud of embers for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there takes 10 or 3d6 fire damage. Uh, A wave of searing heat fills the lair in a 300-foot radius around Imix for an instant. Each creature other than Imix in the area must succeed on a DC 15 constitution saving throw or take 1d8 fire damage. Creatures that take fire damage from this effect gain one level of exhaustion. In addition, there is a 50% chance that any container of fluid held or carried by an effective creature, for example, a magical potion, is destroyed. That's cool. I wonder if this destruction is like it evaporated or like the container got too hot and like burst. Um, That's very interesting. Yeah. I, I like the exhaustion coming into play for heat. I went to Arizona this last summer and they were having like a record heat wave like many places are in these times. And... uh. I was so fucking tired after every time I went outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this makes sense. If you've ever been anywhere that's like 120 plus, you're going to fucking feel that shit. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, so also region, regional effects. We haven't done regional effects since like dragon stuff. It's Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Sweet. It's been a while. Um, the region containing the an elemental node in which Imix is present becomes vulnerable to the influence of fire. This creates the following effects. What's what's What is the elemental node? Um, we talked about this in that same legendary weapons episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so like a little ball. Yeah, the it was a it's a legendary wondrous item. These elemental nodes, and there's one for each of the four elements. Goddamn nodes. Yeah, and they're very much part of the princes of the apocalypse. They can like uh, fucking adventure. explode, right, and do the yeah. They effects. cause super super disasters. Yeah. Okay. A dry baking heat wave strikes the region within ten miles of Imix's location. Uh, do you want to get back onto the calculator? Oh, yeah, let's do miles now. Let's, con- let's convert 10 <laughs> miles. Uh, I'll keep reading, though. Mm-hmm. At first, uh, effects are minor. Grass turns brown. Animals become listless. Work and travel become very tiring. That's 16 kilometers. <laughs> the longer Imix remains, the worse the heat becomes. After five days, crops die and ponds dry up. After 10 days, uh, unprotected livestock dies and wells and small rivers dry up. After 20 days, large lakes and rivers are reduced in depth by 20 feet. And shrink accordingly. No oh, feet. God damn it. <laughs> Six meters. Six meters. There we go. <laughs> Wildfires erupt in a five mile radius of Imix's lair. It's eight kilometers. Every hour, there is a 10% chance that characters in this area are caught in the path of wildfire moving 50 feet per round. That, ah, oh, shit. That's uh, 15. 15 meters. Yeah. We can multiply. On the fly. Each character must... This is stressful. (laughs) We're not even converting days to metric. Yeah. We're not. That's a fun joke. Uh Each character must succeed on a DC 21 constitution saving throw or take 10 or 3d6 fire damage. A wildfire continues to threaten the characters for 1d10 rounds or until they get out of its path. Wooden structures caught in the wildfire are destroyed. Wildfires are crazy. Do you not get caught in one? No. Lava fountains erupt uh, from the ground within one mile. I'm, I'm working on it. 
of a mixed layer. <laughs> That's 1.6 kilometers. Yeah, I was going to say it's close to one and a half. Uh, <laughs> every hour, uh, there is a 10% chance that characters in this area are close enough to an erupting lava fountain to be in danger. Uh, a lava fountain creates a vent 20 feet in diameter. That is six meters. And hurls globs of lava up to 200 feet. That is 60 meters. Away. Uh, each character within it, this area must succeed on a DC 21 dexterity saving throw or take 11 or 2d10 bludgeoning damage plus 17 or 5d6 fire damage. A fountain lasts for 2d10 rounds before subsiding. Wildfires or volcanic fissures within one mile. 1.6 kilometers. Very good. Avi mixes layer. This is how I'm going to learn metric. Yeah, basically. This is this is it. No, I'm serious. This is it. <laughs> D&D. I'm just going to do everything in metric. I'm going to be less American. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wildfires or volcanic fissures within one mile of a mixes layer from intermittent portals to the elemental plane of fire, allowing elemental creatures into the mortal world to dwell near those points. Yeah, so he's he's just a a walking center of destruction. Yeah, where Imix goes, the world burns all around him. If Imix is destroyed or banished back to his home plane, uh, the regional effects fade over the next one d ten days. Yeah, all of this is like suggesting that as an avatar, no matter where it is. Yeah, and that's because in the adventure, that's what it is. So mm -hmm. that's the stat block you're getting. That being said, like, this guy showing up, this avatar showing up, completely fucks up everything within 10 miles. It's a um, lot. That's, that's pretty, that's, this is one of the stronger regional effects that we, I think we've ever read. Yeah. Um, I like it. What's 10 miles? It's like uh, 26, 27 kilometers. <laughs> 16 kilometers. 16. <laughs> I was 10 too high. Sick. Awesome. Well, um, I'll learn I'll learn metric eventually. Yeah, this dude's a walking calamity. Um, I despite my my quibble with the um the summon elements ability, I really like the stat block. I think it's very scary. I think it's a lot to deal with. My one fear here is even with the summon elementals, I, I would just do them ahead of time because in my experience, let's say it's three or four level 15 characters, you know, if they beat Imix in initiative. Well, here comes the paladin, going to unleash <laughs> two to four um, divine smites of fucking doom on you, fourth level or third level or whatever. Um, you here know, come here, here come five paladins. Yeah, here come five paladins. Now everything, everything in the monster no. manual dies to yeah, five paladins. Here comes I don't know if you guys know the that. wizard. <laughs> yeah, everything in the monster manual dies to five paladins. Um, <laughs> it's so true. Um, here comes the wizard with whatever spells they're slinging, and it just yeah is. It, yeah, no, it will get uh, out of hand really no fast. No vulnerabilities in the stat block after all. Yes, which is good. I think that is too easily exploited for a being so strong. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think I would have minions just out at the beginning because you don't want this guy to lose the initiative uh, roll throw and just get lambasted. I'd be like, I'd be, I'd have the pit fiend there, and <laughs> it makes would be there, and he'd be like. <laughs> It makes me be like, oh, are you afraid of the dark? And he'd look at the pit fiend and be like, oh, yeah. And he throws a fucking pile of sand into Imix and he like flares up. <laughs> That's hilarious. I would have the pit fiend inside Imix and I would only bring out the pit fiend if Imix lost the initiative roll and got completely destroyed in the first round. It'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, here's a pit fiend too now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I asked earlier. I think it kind of got uh, glossed over though. Hmm. Can you, can a pit fiend have an avatar? Can it be like an avatar? Uh, or do you I need think, to show up with your real pit fiend. I think that some pit fiends. I think it's acceptable to have a pit fiend have an avatar by thinking way ahead. But it would rain down its challenge rating. You'd probably have to. You'd have scale to do a lot back. of homebrew. You'd have to okay. scale everything back. Um, I would probably instead of a twenty challenge rating, I'd probably have the avatar be a fourteen or fifteen. And if it mixes pit fiend dies, would it go back to? Regular hell? See, here, yeah, here's the thing. is like hell. I don't think there's any reason for Azgaroth to send an avatar because he would die and go back to the Nine Hells. But the Nine Hells and the Elemental Plane of Fire are like easy to mm. go between them. I, and not as hard as the Material Plane, at least. So I think he'd find his way back pretty easily. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. He'd have to like, sneak out of there or like march his way out of there. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, maybe he would send an avatar because like, maybe like the other devils aren't a fan of him abandoning the Blood War. So they're like, bro, yeah, where I are mean, you? If, you're, if you get 
sent back there and you show up and then there's like three pit fiends that are not aligned with your you. wills yeah you're probably gonna get iced right there yeah yeah and if if he if asgaroth is aligned with moloch that means that asgaroth is from what the plane moloch was from most likely in which case moloch's not in control anymore so yeah they would seem Just unlikely fucking vanish yeah, I think well he would go no, he would go, go back to that, to that plane, plane. Okay. But the people there would be like, yo, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah. got a place for your kind. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Let's uh <laughs> let's long rest. Let's long rest. Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest. This is part of the show where we uh get nice and toasty and warm in our Cozy fire slippies. Indeed. They're so hot, though. <laughs> and they also have uh, faces with dark pits for eyes. They're causing local droughts. <laughs> <laughs> there's magma bursting outside the house. I think there's a dude in my fire slippy. And that my slippy forgot about him. Let me out! Ah! <laughs> find us on social media. Indeed. You can find us on X, formerly known as Twitter, on Instagram, on Threads, and on Mastodon. Wow. Links are in the description. Yeah. You can also uh, find us on Discord. We have a whole community there that we interact with and is a lot of fun. Yes, that's correct. Um, I We pumped the Patreon in the short rest, but patreon.com slash the dungeon cast. We are working on new merch. We have a merch store. There's a link in the description below. We also have a P.O. box, which I will be checking sh uh, before next recording. Um, that reminds me. We got... Really cool designs um, for Don't Fart in the Underdark. Yeah. And um, they're they're on the merch shop now. I ordered some. Once they get here, we're going to do a big promo uh, for our buddy Dustin, and we're going to wear the shirts and support them. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so thank you to Dustin for taking care of that. Um, I have a big jar of dice. I was thinking people could guess how many are in there <laughs> and as, our, as a competition. And like whoever wins, we'll do a merch, a Dungeon Cast merch giveaway. I'm down. Maybe Absolutely. for our new merch, our newest merch. You yeah. got, you want? Well, we, we need to put that jar right up front here. You're right. Um. So next episode, we will put the jar right up front because mm -hmm. video's over. Video's over. Can't see it anymore. Can't do it now. But, but it's right back there. You you see it? Oh yeah, I know the one. It's forbidden. One. <laughs> we don't use those dice. We don't. Um. So, and then we'll probably make a video of us counting the dice so you don't think we're liars. That's true. So whatever's in there right now, I think we'll just go for. It. So next episode, we're gonna start a giveaway for Dungeon Cast merch stuff. So keep, you have been warned. Yeah, keep a listen out for that, and um, we will have a visual. And uh, I'll make sure Will takes a few pictures of it so we can post to social. Oh yeah, that yeah. way everybody can can get in on the game without having to go to YouTube. But we are on YouTube. If you want to go there, we appreciate all the subscriptions, the likes, uh, the comments. Um, Next episode, we'll read some YouTube comments. I think we're overdue. Yeah. Um, do we want to read any? I think I think we're low on Apple Podcast reviews right now. So if you guys mm. want to go do that and fill up the tank, that'd be awesome. Please we had like do. a huge wave of them. Uh, you know, the holidays came and things. Everything always slows down. So yeah, um, yeah that's how it goes. If you guys can go to the Apple iTunes, leave those reviews or whatever platform you listen to on, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, Excited for this uh, new chaotic elemental shit this year. <laughs> yeah, um, we should have new art like all over the place for for this year, uh, like new thumbnail and stuff. Uh, I'll be uploading that tonight on a, the first of the year episode drop. Cool. And uh, that should be in merch store soon too, Indeed. if it isn't already. Yeah. Um, a couple of notes. Uh, this episode, I wore a shirt with a big green alien on it that says Baker, California, because my dad bought it for me for Christmas on his way to Vegas from SoCal. And uh was like, you wear it on the show. It was weird. I wore it on the show. I just wanted to it say had, it. It has happened. Also, <laughs> a sad thing happened. Our yes. Dragon Turtle Mini got, it just, It hit the ground on total accident. Um, It wasn't me. I'm not going to say who it was. Well, it wasn't me either. It wasn't Will, <laughs> but it was somebody else. And it, when it hit the ground, it disintegrated. Yeah, yeah. I, I Apparently, it turned to dust. I would have super glued it together, and even if it was a lot of pieces, but it, uh, one of the pieces got stepped on immediately after it fell on the floor, and it like literally turned to, to ash. Wow. So it was just, I was really fucking sad. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was a wicked badass <clears throat> dragon turtle for sure. I know. I'm really sad. Right now, there's a gnome there, 
Uh, it is a big downgrade. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not to shit on my mom too no, hard. No, it got... is an awesome gnome, but it is also not the most awesome dragon turtle I've ever seen. And it's not a D&D, canonical D&D gnome. It looks, no. like, it looks like the abominable snowman's like bastard child. Actually. We'll just say it's a mini Yeti. It's a mini Yeti. It's a baby Yeti. We got a baby Yeti wearing a like snow gear yeah that's my my son's new thing if he ever sees like a small version of a thing he says baby whatever the thing is like baby yoda he he is not aware of baby yoda but but yes in the same vein you know baby dinosaur baby car baby this everything's baby yeah he's right he is not wrong uh (laughs) and my mom gave me that gnome for christmas so i'm i'm rocking my parents stuff so they leave me alone I put it on my show. Yeah, there it is. They get me stuff, and they're like, put this on your show, and I think it's cute. So Yeah, no, it's cool. I think yeah. it's super cool. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys right. later. The Dungeon Cast.